was. I mean, it was more atrocious. The out of focus on on uh, pirates was because of the action sequence. Out of focus on Tron were like maybe static shots, and they out they threw I don't it back. Know, it's, it's yeah. like... There was no reason for it being out of focus on Tron because it was virtually all a digital product. But um, you, you you need to go if you want. I, I'm I'm a proponent of 3D. I've been in 3D for 60 years now. And they say, well, God, you can't be that old. Oh, God, I am that old. I'm in my eighth decade, folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in my ninth. You know, say, you know, I, I'm old enough to say, oh, my God, you look like your passport picture. You know you're old when they say you look like your passport picture. And then they, oh, I didn't mean to say that. No, but um, I've been to stuff. Uh, since like the Bride of the you know Bride of the Gorilla, well, God, that was a bad movie, bad bank rob. But I mean, I've seen 3D done with black and white. I it came beyond, it came beyond outer space, or came from, you know with uh, basically it was a Ray Bradbury thing. With uh, I think it had Russell Johnson from Gilligan's Island. It had um, Richard Carlson in it, and uh, but I mean they got this big eye. Oh, Oh, it had Joe Sawyer into it from Rin Tin Tin. If you ever saw Rin Tin Tin, Joe Sawyer was in it. That was a sergeant in it. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, they said, God, you must have done everything. Well, I, was, I did everything because my grandmother was a script supervisor and my father was a second unit man. And basically, you know, tell people, they would need some, we, Hollywood has this nasty habit. If you have a better opportunity coming up, they'll walk off the movie you're on. And, well, we're going to ban you. Well, I just got a starring role over here, so I don't care about this. So I floated in, and I floated out. Today, I'd get a credit for it, but when we're talking up until... Well, you did it. They didn't. No, I mean, look at the credits. I mean, look at the credits on the things like I, she knows she's seen me in. The credits are about like this long. The day the credit... Well, they got like ten names or something. Yeah, they got ten names. They don't, unless you really spoke. I mean, I worked on Wagon Train. They had like they had the two main stars, the guest star, and maybe like five more people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have seen people that are no or, that are major. Okay, anybody? If, I'm, I'm getting off track, maybe, but uh, if Alvy Moore, who was the uh, you know the ag uh, the agricultural person over on Green Acres, he's been he's done Al, I've seen him doing spots over on Wagon Train, you know, speaking parts with no credit, mm -hmm. no credit. I've seen actors, major actors. I mean, I saw Robert Redford in uh, in some um, episodes. Actually, I did. I worked for Desi a little bit because you know my family knows that they knew people over there. But um, Robert Redford is basically chewing up the scenery in an episode of um, uh, Untouchables. He didn't even get credit because he wasn't important in the scene. They gave the uh, they gave the the guy playing Frank Netty. They gave the entire. They didn't even name all the entire guys. Uh, all of Robert's tax untouchables didn't get. We they got, didn't. We got Paul Percarney and a couple of other people got credit, but they, you know, like they had maybe uh, uh, ten people at the most out of this. I mean, like the woman the other day died, um, uh, who was Dick Gordier's wife, Bonnie, Bonnie, Bonnie Stewart, or Bunny Stewart, mm -hmm. Bunny, they, but she never got credit for half the things she did because a lot of what she did was in early television. They didn't give credit, but a few people. Unless you were a principal, you did not get credit. And the day they go back and they readjust things, I mean, um, you know, I have no desire to go readjust everything out there. I mean, we're, 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 we got an IMDb. We just haven't used it, but we got one. But um, but I was doing stuff heavy. You would never have seen a professionally made motion picture screw up as badly as they're doing on the 3Ds that I've been watching. Mm -hmm. Would not have been done. Because we're all about, um, we, 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 actually we can finish off my piece by thing. Jack Warner said, I don't care who comes to see my movie as long as they're paying to see it. And they're paying to see it, so I'm going to give them the best that we can give them for what they're paying. Mm -hmm. Remember, they're only paying a quarter, so he did say those words. I'm going to give them the best that we can give them for what they are paying. Yeah, but how long ago was that? Uh, you know, yeah, a while, a while ago. ago. No, it basically, I did go That's when the movies were a quarter. I know that movies were a quarter. Movies were only a dollar once ago, not that long ago. Um, you could go over. My mother once was involved with the uh, Pacific Theaters, and you could go in to see one of their movies for a buck on you know, Thursday, which was a dead night. You go see a movie for a dollar, get popcorn for ten cents, drink for ten cents. But um, nobody would ever give. They would simply not 
put something out that it wasn't their best effort. It would not be done. The uh, the actors may walk through a scene, which means they they're not. I'm no. Uh, I'm just being paid to be here, so I don't care about it. The people standing behind the camera will always. They will not push a button on their camera unless they're going to. The scene is in focus, and that everything is doing the best. I mean, I know people basically. Some photographers. They, they basically pick somebody like Robert Redford was because Robert Redford was really handsome. They would basically give him the best shots. Uh, Julie, um, we got uh, Julie Adams, which was in the Bride of, well, she was in the uh, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. They gave her the best shots. The camp, they loved Sid Charisse. Mm -hmm. They would give them the best shots, but they always were 100% professionalism. What you're seeing in 3D is not 100% professional in a day. It's basically, I don't give a damn, and let's get the thing over with. Actors take it seriously. Mm -hmm. The actors are basically giving it 100% because they know that they have to, but basically understand, mm -hmm. a lot of the younger actors are stage actors. Oh, so they're used to the audience. They're used they're... to, I mean, they're basically, Charlie Chaplin would have been magnificent in 3D because everything is emoting. I mean, what makes Johnny Depp so good is Johnny Depp is a, he overdoes everything, which means you know, but he, you know his hands are always moving. The same thing with Brendan Fraser. Brendan, Fra Brendan Fraser is the king of the green screen. Brendan Fraser overdoes all his actions on in front of the green screen, which is why he he, he does it naturally because he's actually a stage person. Is he? Oh, he's naturally a stage performer. Yeah, even though he's his entire career is movies, he's still basically a stage performer that does movies, and the stage people are the best for three D. Because they know that you have to perform, um, uh, you know, I keep it like Ethel Merman. They said, why would the singer Ethel Merman so loved by people on the Broadway stage? Because the guys that were paying a buck for a seat could hear what Ethel Merman was doing and they could see what she was doing. Mm. I mean, that's it. I mean, um, uh, I, another thing, I mean, just you know, another thing, my grandmother was doing a thing with uh, Robert Redford and Bill, um, Bill Redman. And uh, Robert, uh, not Robert, it was uh, Marlon Brando and Bill Redman. And uh, somebody in the back of the room said, you know, hey, Brando, we can't see you doing anything. And then uh, they said, Redfield, what was his name? He said, and he, my grandma said, he said, yeah, you're right, you're not. He said, I didn't. Oh, and then he's doing, you know, he's, he just did for, he was doing, he went into the movie, he forgot he was doing a Broadway play and went into the movie stuff, which yeah. is basically, no, you don't sulk and stuff on Broadway. Sulking on Broadway doesn't work. The guys in the back seat are paying to be there, so he all of a sudden got animated, and they said, my grandma said they were doing like this. And then they said to Brando, you know, because he, he knew he screwed up, and he basically let people know. You know, he didn't say it as much, but he did let people know that he understood that they were paying to see a stage show, not a movie. Mm -hmm. It's why, um, you know, uh, it's why the Stanislavski method acting doesn't work, and why the true stage actors always do better than because they're presenting. That's right. Whereas on a movie camera, the, the people are doing the performances, but the cameras are moving in and out. No, doing, I right? do know actors. I mean, I know I know James Dean. I mean, James Dean was two people. James Dean came from a theatrical. He came from a theatrical background in live TV. In movies, James Dean would be. A, but then he'd do television, which was live, and he'd be, you know, he wouldn't, you know, he would move. Here's the, here's him doing, you know, from East of Eden, he would, he did on, I think, movie, he did movie, he's, here's James Dean and the same thing on television. You know, it's the same emoting, different. One is, the, one is like, tele, they treated live TV like it was motion, like it was a theatrical event. Motion picture. Uh, was this people? But people got to see James. The two James Dean. One was live television. Same thing with. Um, there's two different. Um, uh, two different. There were two different. Uh, Yul Brenners. There were two different. Um, uh, Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson was Fat Jack on TV. Yul Brenner had hair on. Was one of the top people in television history. And uh, you know, Yul Brenner would be. You know. You know, that's a movie version. Television version of the same thing. That's different. It's what it's what makes the movie different than a theatrical production. If you want 3D, you got to get the actors in there because we know that uh, uh, 
virtually everybody except Dept and the young lady that played the mermaid and Penelope Cruz were all stage people. We got three actors, the others are all stage people. Everyone that you saw on the screen. Oh, that's interesting. All of them, Godfrey Rush's stage. Uh, the guy that played uh, Phillips, you know, the, the first mate on the Black Pearl, he was stage. Uh, all the background actors were stage. Sam Califan? Uh, Cl yeah, the Clifton? guy. Califan, yeah. He plays the missionary. The Royal, can, Roy, the, uh, Royal uh, basically, he's a, from the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. Dramatic arts, and if you watch him, why he stands out is because, well, he you know he does fighting sort, but he's also he's using his body constantly. He picks it's up. It's like where you're commanding the stage presence. That's right. He took he took control of everything that he was featured in. He took control, mm -hmm. and the other actors tended to back out of his scenes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because. He was, you know, that he was being featured, it was because he simply took control of the scene because he was a stage actor. Depp backed off. Cruz backed off because he was in control and he deliberately, you know, walked, you know, like he's got one scene where he's deliberately with his walking away and basically sondering with the girl in his arms. He knows that that's his and he's basically giving you the walk away from a, from a stage production. He took control of the scenes he was in. Johnny Depp, when Johnny Depp is featured, Johnny Depp takes control from everybody else that's in the scene. There's nobody else in the scene when Johnny Depp is there. If he's fighting somebody else, it's, here, it's not, not there because Johnny Depp is doing he, things. He commands the scene. That's right. That's how you make a 3D movie. You have to remember that you have to take control. You cannot just simply, you know, Marlon Brando, if Marlon Brando, if Marlon Brando, was to put his hands in a 3D movie, it wouldn't work. But if Marlon Brando was, uh, you know, Marlon Brando did this, remember, he didn't just walk around mumbling all the time. He'd walk, uh, you know, that's called, he was doing his Shakespeare stuff, folks. You know, like, to be or not to be, that is the question. He's basically thinking like Shakespeare. He was a Shakespearean performer. He's doing like that. He, he, when he's bringing, when he's, when he's at his best, He's not standing still and doing nothing. When he's at his best, he is moving, moving body movements. 3D does work its best. If you remember, audience does not want to pay for crap. They like the action stuff really works well, but you got to remember that you can't photograph the thing with a 3D camera the same way you photograph with a 2D. If you're going to play it that way, don't photograph with a 3D camera. And you know, like my in conclusion, might as well just back in. Yeah. But my, in my part, you can basically make a comment. You can tell a, two, a true 3D camera because the true 3D camera does not zoom. It totally does not zoom. I mean, like I said, she's still in focus back there. But the fact is, because I'm, I'm close to the camera, the depth of field has me looking sharper. But she still is totally in focus. If she had a sign that we could actually show back there, the sign would be just as in focus there, because actually I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm like 15 foot away from her right now, folks. And that's something, but, you, know, and, you know, she can basically give you know, her little curse feel about it. But we went on and on. I'm just pissed off at the fact that they're trying to kill something because of incompetence, not because the people don't want it. The people, there is an audience for it because the audience, the fact is, the 3D movies are all the highest grossing movies out there. Mm -hmm. All the three movies. If you look at last year's box office, I think uh, like 60 or was it 70 percent of all the movies all the were in the top in 10 from 3D movies. Uh, and the same this year. Every big hit has been a 3D movie. Every big hit so far to this point in May has been a 3D movie. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the, the fact that not being scared by the 3D movies now because they're sucking the life out of the 3D movies are sucking the life out of the industry, which means there is a market for it. But you can get the you can get the cost of shooting down, you can get the cost of uh, back uh, you know, cost of everything can be brought down, but it has to they have to start thinking about the customer and not about their bottom line until they do that. You're basically stomping all over it. So Pirates of the Caribbean is stomping all over 3D. So like I said, do you want more more things to say here? No, you brought me. No, I mean, I I can. See, he, he gets more involved in the technical aspects. I understand the technical, but I'm more involved in the the um, viewing. <laughs>